Hello, what I want to underline, this is not just me teaching you how to supervise, all of you have some experience of supervision, I want more to share and all comments and ideas are welcome. Uh, besides what I'm going to speak about, but still I let myself to lead the event because I am supervisor of 32 defended PhD thesis, which shows quite experience in this case. Um, uh, Ilya Bey has many times noticed that uh, MA and PhD students are complaining they uh, don't get um, enough necessary skills during the research skills course. Uh, but I think the reason is two-sided. It's not only the lecturers who deliver this course to blame, but it's the students also. Uh, from my experience, students perceive all courses, including this course, as um, just some course which has to be passed and forgotten after passed. Um, and uh, on the other hand, they don't transfer this course on uh, their writing a thesis, master thesis or doctoral thesis. That's why whoever teaches this research skills course uh, should take into consideration that it should be made more um, research linked. Not just talking about how to do a research, but doing let it be some very small scale research within that course so that they can practice um, how to write the references, how to write uh, literature analysis and not just enumeration of authors' ideas, etc. etc. So, um, and it's a good idea that uh, at the time when students take research skills, they have uh, information about those uh, professors who can be in the future their supervisors and then they can informally, unofficially yet, contact them and discuss with them some issues because usually when research skills are taught with, without some professor's support it's really just uh, a torn off course and not part of their research activities. And we should ask students to visit potential supervisors and uh, probably arrange uh, at least one class during research skills uh, course. When these potential supervisors come and there is some group work, when there is a group of let's say three or four people, among which one is a professor and others are students, and they they, they do some job required in this uh, course. Um, it is very important that students beforehand visit the potential supervisor. And uh, of course, you know, uh, students usually get the information who at the university are the supervisors. And there is a whole queue to supervisors while maybe we have some other good supervisors but it's not yet known. So um, we program coordinators I think should provide students information about potential supervisors with the advantages saying this person is good at this, 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 has experience of that and that's why I recommend you very much to choose this person and so on. So that will be very helpful that uh, the interests of the student and the supervisor uh, meet each other. Um, the students, uh, especially master students, doctoral students definitely do it, but master students, while they are taking courses, they have to read more research articles. Because those research articles which they read is not only study material, it is sample. It is a sample how to write research. And very often they don't write good articles, for example, because they have not had enough good samples. And in master programs, we should demand from students to read more research articles, not only textbooks. That's very, very important. Um, and um, 
generally, not at our university, everywhere. There are two typical approaches how the title is chosen. One approach practiced in many universities, which I horribly dislike, is uh, potential supervisors give the list of topics which they are ready to supervise, and students have to choose only from these topics, no other topics possible. And the student is lucky if on the list there is a topic which is interesting and useful for him, but what, what if not? In this way, we will lose a lot of good students, I think, and that's the wrong way. Another way is, for example, in our faculty, we always practice it. It's uh, when potential supervisor and student come together and the student describes the area he or she is especially competent in and interested in, probably has already made some uh, conference presentations or written some articles or uh, did some extra reading or research. And uh, usually for the student, especially when the student, it's difficult to formulate the topic well. But to know the area where they are strong and good, uh, usually who knows it better. And you know, if a student is given a topic by somebody, till the end, that student will view that topic as that person's topic. It's my supervisor's topic. That's why I hate it. And uh, I, I can't work on it well and um, I'm not successful in it because it's not interesting for me or I'm not competent in it and supervisor is not making me more competent, etc. Et so that's very important that uh, this uh, choosing the title is a mutual effort and not just supervisor's effort. Uh, as far as I know, in our university, in majority of cases. It is so, but sometimes it's not so. And sometimes students blame supervisors that they chose such a bad topic for me. I lost a semester, a year, two years, and then I had to choose the topic. So, so this thing has to be done from the very beginning, uh, so that not to be blamed. Uh, so when uh, the topic is chosen, don't begin directly with formulating the title. So, uh, you go on the way like uh, narrowing and narrowing and narrowing down till you, till, till you reach what is needed. So first just choose the area and all, after choosing the area try to formulate the title. And when you formulate the title try to make it narrow enough so that it is doable for masters in half a year, for doctors in a year and a half or two years. Because sometimes the topic itself is wonderful, but it's not doable in that time. It's too big, too serious. So it's very important to come to that narrow enough point, but not too narrow, because if it is too narrow, there will be not enough literature. And uh, people will say that the topic is not interesting, it's interesting for too few people, and so on. So, um, and of course, uh, you have to combine students' knowledge, experience, and current work with uh, supervisors' qualification. Unfortunately, sometimes students want some topic for which we do not have supervisors with corresponding uh, qualification. We, we can try to offer something else, but um, students should be free probably to find a person from the outside who could be at least a co-supervisor or consultant or something who is more qualified in the direct topic. Because uh, we are not superhumans and we can't know everything in our field. And if we feel that we are not competent enough, why, why, you, why not use a co-supervisor from inside or from outside? Uh, and of course, the title has some formal uh, norms. The title should not be terribly long. Uh, some people think that if it's a long and with a lot of terms, it sounds so scientific. And sometimes the title occupies four lines. And till you come to the end, you have forgotten what's in the beginning. So that's not a good idea. Normally, internationally, for articles, it's eight, nine words, and it's 10, mm, 12 words in the title. Uh, if you have a subtitle in brackets, that does not count. 
but the basic title should not be longer than 10 words because it's usually confusing. Well, I'm not saying about so something like this, but it, it should not be huge, that's quite important. A uh, very important mistake which many supervisors and students make using abbreviations in titles. If you use abbreviation in title, except uh, world famous like NATO or something like this, but if it is um, in the field, it's so-so uh, known, so in people working in the field may not know this abbreviation, then this abbreviation should be in brackets decoded. Uh, it's not permitted just to write an abbreviation and then so, because it may be misleading to, to many people. Uh, no interrogative sentences like, I don't know, um, how did Obama lose his popularity? Okay, nothing like this. So it should be declarative sentence. Of course, for an article, this is for a, for a conference uh, proceedings. That's okay, but uh, no interrogative form. form is possible for dissertation title. And uh, what is very important, title is the first thing people come across. That's why the title should contain the main keywords of the dissertation itself. Because you know, I have uh, been at defenses when the dissertation was wonderful, but one of the key words in the title was not reflected in the dissertation and almost failed. It was on the border of failing. Because they said, why, why did you put it in the title then? So if the title contains some concept, this concept has to be uh, <coughs> in the dissertation. That's very important because people choose sometimes some popular terms to, to make it sound contemporary, but then forget it inside the dissertation. So that's very important. And um, in fact, main idea or hypothesis, what you are offering, I don't mean the text of hypothesis should be there, but there should be some hint about the hypothesis that you offer in the title. In that case, title is a good advertisement for whoever reads, uh, let's say, title and short abstract. The person will already understand this dissertation is for him, not for him, and so on. So that's terribly important. The title should be as clear as possible. So, uh, especially in social sciences and humanities, uh, it should mention who are the people involved. Like, I don't know, teaching uh, English to business managers. Okay, so it's understandable that the topic deals with business managers and subjects of research. So, and uh, teaching English is an uh, object of research, so they have to be reflected. It should be neither too wide nor too narrow, it should apply popular to the terms. Uh, the title should, should be mm, sellable. Uh, that's why uh, <coughs> avoid using some outdated, probably even good, but outdated terminology. And uh, to reflect some innovative ideas uh, about which probably everybody, even not specialists in the fields, know that it's something, something new. Because innovation, this is also something which somehow has to be uh, shown in the title. Uh, and this one. Okay. So uh, there are some uh, useful words for the titles. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to use them, but it's a good idea to use them, like the impact or the effect of something on something, uh, ways to increase the efficiency of something, a comparative study of something to something. Uh, defining the factors of something, a critical analysis of something, etc. So these are good phrases to use in the titles, especially again in humanities and social sciences. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, as I have mentioned, uh, every word in the title should work. It means that it should be reflected in the title of the chapter or sub-chapter, 
or whatever. So every word, because somebody may say you have it in the title, but you don't have it in the dissertation. That's very important. And it should work in problem statement and questions, in the hypothesis, in the contents, in the titles of chapters and subchapters. And especially important in the research chapter. Because sometimes the theoretical part is fine, but the research deals with part of it, or vice versa. Uh, more many things uh, besides the title. Okay, so these things should coincide. And in the conclusions, in the conclusions, all these words should be dealt with to show that you really did what your title says. So you have to prove you identify the difference. Mm -hmm. So, um, Supervisor has many responsibilities, too many probably, but well, that's our life. So, um, in the dissertation writing guide, um, is it already on the web or still? Pamela is making some language changes, etc. Dissertation writing guide, which used to be Appendix 5. Not yet changed. No, it's changed, but it's not on the web. It's not on the web because our web is under construction. It's very bad. Can we ask someone to send it to no. all faculties at least? <coughs> Maybe tip at this time because someone is not working as I want. You are still there. Which time? Well, you have to do now. What was Mr. Shi? Um, the dissertation writing guide enumerates all the responsibilities that supervisors have because experience shows that some supervisors think that all they have to do in the beginning is help to choose the title and write the contents and in the end read what the student has written but the supervisor has much more responsibilities including um, recommending some key references, not many, but the key ones. Asking students what keywords she will use for literature search. Usually students come and say we didn't find any literature. But uh, there is plenty of literature, they are just using wrong keywords. And the supervisor has to help with these keywords. Uh, recommending sites where in their sphere um, research literature can be found because very often students use um, Facebook and such stupid things because they just have no idea. For example, in education such a site is Eric and each sphere will have its own site where uh, lots of research literature is for free. Not all for free, lots for free. And um, supervisor has uh, to demand from the student on a certain time, let's say twice a month, uh, to submit something that the student already has done. Has done does not mean that he has written something. Probably he just uh, reports that I have read this, this, this book or uh, article or whatever, but the supervisor has to follow the supervisee on a regular basis. You can say, what if I send him her letters, he doesn't uh, answer. Well, we have to do our responsibility. If they don't fulfill their responsibility, it's already their problem. But uh, they should not be able to, to say so. And my practical recommendation is when you write some letters and don't get an answer, don't delete them from your mail. You may need to prove that you did everything you could because there are such situations and you need weapon to protect yourself against the lazy student. Um, and follow the timing and send a lot of letters. Mm -hmm. Also, um, what I usually do, I demand from my students one subchapter, it doesn't have to be one one, it may be any, but one subchapter uh, sent to me soon enough, because what students tend to do is to send you whole dissertation or at least whole chapter, and imagine they went their own way and a lot of work and time will be wasted. That's why I usually demand, for example, I give one month maximum, 
and say, you send me one subchapter, whichever you like, uh, I will give you my recommendations and critical uh, remarks, and after that you can send me a review piece like one chapter. Uh, I don't usually wait for one chapter because I, I um, value students' time and, and work. Maybe uh, stupid work, but still work. Um, so, when we give critical comments to students, they should be clear and concrete. What some supervisors do, they just cross out the whole page it, without explaining why. They say, it's no good. So you have to say why it's not no good and what you want instead of it and so on. So your comments should be quite concrete. Um, Supervisor has to control the quality of publication, not just how many articles a student has published, but what the student has published. So, though you are not a co-author, and formally you are not uh, required to do it, but if you want your student to defend you, you have to control what they have written in the article. And the main thing, that the article is really connected with the topic. Some students think that the list of uh, publications, it's the list of publications they ever did. No, it's not so. It's the list of publications which reflect the main issues in the dissertation. So uh, that's the supervisor's responsibility to follow this thing. Um, and also help the articles to be published. I mean, inform students to which journals they can send them they may be not aware where it can be published. And of course, uh, advertise our conference, like Silk Road conference, that you can publish them. Um, when I speak about the quality of article or quality of thesis, I mean contents on the one hand, organization structure on the other hand, citation format on still another hand, and language on the other hand. Unfortunately, some dissertations are brought to the stage of defense, which are not readable due to their very poor English. A uh, supervisor is responsible for it. I don't mean the supervisor should sit as an editor and correct every sentence. But the supervisor has to demand from the student, somehow with professional editor's help, some colleagues help, whatever, but to improve the quality of English to make it at least readable, if not perfect, but at least readable. So, um, supervisor <laughs> has to follow the plagiarism issue, especially with PhD students, unfortunately with masters it's a bit problematic. It should not be, but well. Uh, follow the student, the, the student has covered all credits and other requirements. It's a uh, joint responsibility of program coordinator and supervisor, but still uh, it's good if supervisor controls and asks students towards the end and have you really covered all courses because it may happen that the student has one course left and he thinks that next semester he is starting working on dissertation but he can't because it's not permitted. And some supervisors don't know about it to say nothing about students. Um, yeah, in the end, uh, for the masters and for PhD students, we have, I think, a very good new practice which we started last semester. The supervisor has to give a short, uh, uh, not review, but sort of review how the student was working. Okay, if you as a supervisor, once, twice, and in the end, third time for the whole dissertation, right, the dissertation was good and the student did everything he could, and then the student fails, uh, everybody will believe, including the student, and will believe correctly that it's not only the student's failure, it's your failure as a supervisor. So, uh, please uh, provide all this step-by-step -step, uh, uh, monitoring and if it is bad, don't write, it's good. I know it's Georgian tradition, we want to be good people and want and uh, hope that last second something will change and the student will submit a good one. But please don't write good 
review if you think that dissertation is no good. Because uh, then you will be too late that it is not. Okay? This is guaranteed to have no new documents. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> uh, the timing of working on dissertation should be realistic and from the very beginning you need to work out a kind of table scheme, uh, how often the student has to report to you, how much he has to do it. Uh, of course, uh, especially PhD dissertation, this is scientific creativity and you can't expect a person exactly follow that schedule. But well, more or less, as much as possible, because otherwise the student is going to have a problem. Um, for example, we know that we need three articles, one of them either international citation or IPSO journal uh, to, to be published in order that the papers are accepted. And some supervisors don't check whether the student has any publication till the last moment and then the dissertation is ready, the student wants to submit, but sorry, he cannot submit and Mrs. Tatiana becomes the, the object of attack. Why, why does not she accept the papers? But because the requirements are not uh, met. So that, that's quite important and we should know especially that either IPSU publication or international citation, it takes time, that's